Hello, everybody. I'm back with the podcast. It's been a little while, uh, but I have a, an extra special guest with me today. Her name is Lauren. And I got in contact with Lauren because I have switched my diet around. Big announcement here, okay? <laughs> this is uh, an exclusive. Um, I'm off the carnivore diet and I'm on the GAPS diet. I'm going to make a separate video as to why that is. But today we're here to talk about the GAPS diet. And Lauren, this is her specialty. She's been on it for six years and she coaches this. She has an awesome website, which I'm hoping she'll share with us later as well. Uh, so Lauren, welcome. And uh, I'm really looking forward to asking some questions today. Thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So. Uh, I have to ask this, and I'm sure, you know, you could ask this question all the time, but uh, what brought you to the GAPS diet? I'm always interested in hearing the story that, you know, uh, has led people to these crazy kind of diets. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like, how did you even get here? This is yeah. So, it, so, know, so how messed up were you? <laughs> seemingly, yeah, just so on the fringe, right? And so extreme, I've heard, like, labeled these diets, and yet, when you're in it, it seems extreme not to, just because of all the health benefits and how like profoundly it changes your life, right? So yeah. I feel like we're lucky enough to even be exposed to this information, right? Like you hear about something once or twice. For me, I was at a prestigious herbal medicine internship and one of the nutrition teachers casually mentioned the GAPS diet as something that would heal kids from autism and that like kids would like poop out a brick, a tar brick, and then be like healed of autism or whatever. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I didn't know food could do that. And yeah. then, you know, lo and behold, a few years later, I'm having pretty serious health issues of my own. I've tried the body ecology diet, the anti-candida diet, thinking that candida was my issue, but really candida was just a symptom. And the GAPS diet, like I haven't struggled with autism. I did learn actually through the GAPS book that ADD is on the autism spectrum. I was like, oh, well, that's very familiar, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I had, I was having so many mental health issues initially, and I seem like a calm, cool, collected person now, but I was throwing tantrums as a 26 year old woman. At uh, my worst, I had put three, like punched three holes in the walls with my elbow. And um, I kind of had this like come to Jesus moment that was like, I'm going to lose everything I love if I either don't a go back on medication because I had been on medication for PTSD, bipolar, ADD, um, and gotten off of it largely with yoga. And at the time it, it was a vegetarian diet, but really it was taking processed food out. Right. That was like the first time I started cooking for myself. So we're on this journey and I feel like First of all, I work with so many recovering vegetarians and vegans, <laughs> but it's like the, the kind of people who care about this stuff, um, not only the health of the planet that they live in, but also they see the difference that like food makes in their bodies. And then it's kind of this constant uncovering process to be like, okay, well, if food does make this kind of a difference, like what is the best version of that for me. So what brought me to the GAPS diet was my mental health. And I think um, that was like the, the motivating force behind sticking with it. It wasn't like, oh, you have to like stick with this diet so you can look hot on the beach or whatever. It was like, <laughs> you need to stick with this so you don't like punch more holes in the walls so that or you, you can or you stay don't with die. your <laughs> lovely boyfriend, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. you know, maintain your friendships and things like that. So that's kind of how I was 
went into it, but really the mental health issues, and you'll learn this if you look into the GAPS diet, which is, you know, the gut and psychology syndrome, but also gut and physiology, right? And so the mental health symptoms were actually just the first like real warning signs that something was profoundly wrong um, in my gut. And the GAPS diet has evolved so much, but basically I got the privilege of um, becoming I went through a lot of stuff, right? Like just because we're on these healing diets doesn't mean that we don't have health setbacks because things happen, you're exposed to things. I was working with pesticides for a while. A year or two later, I learned I have record-breaking amounts of pesticides in my body, but my body basically just starts shutting down. And I get to a point where I can't leave my house At certain points, I can't leave my bed. I have rashes all over my body. I really just, I can't work anymore. Like I can't function. And that's really when I- Sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but this is while you're on the GAPS diet or before the GAPS diet? Yes. So, and that's kind of like my message too, is that we can be on the GAPS diet per se, but not have the correct support in place for ourselves. And what I realized was every minute detail mattered. Okay. Everything I did mattered. Everything I exposed myself to mattered. Okay. And I was in like a very hypersensitive state in, in, okay. in that time of my life. And so like, I guess that was a gift in a way because I could see just like these like, small shifts that I was making that were making the profound changes in my ability to recover and start to gain traction on my life again. Okay. So, so, okay, let's, let's uh, delve deeper in that. So these things start derailing while you're on the GAPS diet due to environmental factors or whatever. Um, So how do you, first off, I mean, uh, I guess you had some tests done to, to decipher that you had these, the pesticides and stuff exposure to this. Um, so how do you go about rectifying that? Like, what did you do next? Intro. <laughs> and, okay, so you went back to intro. So you were on full and then you went back to intro. I attempted intro or I started gaps intro five different times. Okay. Um, Let's, so let's back up even further now. So before we get into that, okay. Can you explain to us the different stages of GAPS diet? Because a lot of people might be new to this, right? They've never even heard of GAPS diet before. So can you explain what intro means and what full GAPS means and, and all that stuff as to not to confuse people? Yes. So GAPS intro can be confusing because you think of it as like, okay, well, that's where you start. Um, But how I have people think of it is Think about introducing food in stages one at a time. So full gaps is the entire gamut of what a gut healing diet looks like, right? You have nuts, you have cheese, you have, you know, when you get really advanced, you can even have like some weak coffee, you know, crazy, I know. Yeah, um, I can't even imagine. <laughs> and so full gaps is kind of like what you're working up to as you're an intro. So depending on where you're at in your life, you know, like you travel a lot, you're busy, um, you need to be able to get thing like eat things on the go or whatever. Full gaps is a really great place to start for someone like that. Um, On the other end, you know, you have an autistic child or you have like really severe digestive issues or um, any kind of irritable bowel disease, um, food sensitivities. Generally what I see, and this kind of speaks to the toxicity that is in our environment now. When Dr. Natasha started this way, way long ago, I mean, her first like GAPS book came out in 2004. Mm. And so people didn't even really need the intro diet, which is really like almost, it's like hard for me to even believe that now, just because generally speaking, even if you start on full GAPS at some point, 
your body will probably be called to go on to intro, um, into intro, just to like really get that like deeper level of gut healing. And, yeah. and why intro is so special, right? Is because the first stage, everything is cooked in this meat stock and you have my meat stock training. And I think also, you know, shows what you're up against and every, like, just because, you know, you're talking about, I'm sure you've talked about like histamine issues and, and then things like that. No. Oh, yeah. oh, um, terrible. I mean, no. <laughs> we can get into that because I'm still, to be honest with you, I'm like two weeks in GAPS diet now and I'm still getting terrible histamine reactions. Yeah. And so that's where, um, yeah, like for you, and I don't really know you all except for that, is that I was like, well, I wouldn't start you on intro because you have kind of a sensitivity to meat stock and we can talk about, you know, there's so many roads we could go down, but for now it's like, okay, yeah, I'd start you off with like, you know, full gaps with the foods you can tolerate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people on gaps, they already know like, oh yeah, cheese doesn't work for me or I can't eat nuts or whatever. And that's really what intro is for. But initially it's like, okay, well, like, let's start with what we can within the, these parameters and then give you like a drop of meat stock a day and see how that fares and then increase from there and right and increase your tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, okay. So what is allowed on intro then, if you don't mind, you know, going through the list of foods, because there aren't a lot of foods on, on intro that you could really get into, but uh, maybe you could just give us a a short list so it's very simple everything is cooked in meat stock um you can have meat obviously but no processed meat no like pre-prepared food nothing spiced nothing smoked everything needs to be like raw and fresh or frozen from frozen and then there are low fiber vegetables that are allowed on the intro diet um boiled, there is right everything boiled yes so you including bring the meat. oil and then you simmer it right including the meat mm -hmm. right okay okay and um are you allowed like it uh, does it have to be insanely strict because i know there's some people that might do like honey or tea or things like that does, is that something that is allowed on on gaps intro you can have um like single herb teas so chamomile ginger nettle mint like really like gentle simple things okay um honey is allowed on stage one it's not um recommended in high amounts by any means um, but there is something that I recommend to almost everyone who can tolerate honey is that your blood sugar is going to be dropping really low. And there's a certain mechanism of why this happens. But um, basically, if you mix either coconut oil or um, ghee with honey to taste, and anytime you have a sugar craving, you can just eat a spoonful because really your body's craving sugar and fat. And we don't want your blood sugar to drop too heavily. Um, when your gut is healed more, it's not an issue. But when you're first getting on it, it, it does end up being kind of a lifeline for some people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, somebody like myself, so you mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, candida and stuff like we have, we're very similar. I didn't know how similar, you know, our stories kind of are because, you know, I've been dealing with candida for a long time and I have SIBO and um, I get all the rashes and brain fog, anxiety. So a lot of the mood stuff like you had as well and um, insomnia and, you know, just waking up feeling like out of my mind, crazy kind of thing. <laughs> it's really hard to deal with. Um, and uh, I find that the GAPS intro diet really calms, like really soothes my gut and my acid reflux gets a lot better. The pain in my abdomen gets better. Everything sort of gets better, but at the same time, my anxiety and the brain fog could get worse. And I'm assuming it's probably from histamine reactions or maybe just like detoxing. I'm not quite sure. 
But so is this something that you have seen before? Is it fairly common that people might react? Like, do people get used to the meat stock over time? Or how does it work for somebody who has like really bad leaky gut and gets these histamine reactions? Like, what are they supposed to do? So there's three reasons that you could have a histamine reaction. Um, there's an enzyme that breaks down histamine that you may be lacking in. It could be a gut issue. So certain bacteria in the gut that are overgrown that their byproduct is histamine and it's out of balance, or you could have like a mass cell disorder and that becomes more complicated. And so what I have the most experience with, I don't specialize in histamine, um, but what I have the most experience with is like, okay, well, if it's gut dysbiosis, mm -hmm that's just a matter of kind of what I mentioned earlier, how slowly you can introduce things. Mm -hmm. um, and with like people who have histamine issues also have issues with ferments, right? And actually Dr. Natasha has found the longer you ferment something, like if, if something is fermented for a year, which is just kind of nuts to think about, but if something was, it would have absolutely no levels of histamine in it. And so, you know, we start there, people with histamine issues, I'm like, make your ferments now and we'll like introduce them in like six months, you know? Um, but then it is, it's just like introducing things like a drop at a time, two drops, taking a quart of water, putting a drop of either meat stock or ferment and that. And this is something where like, you are really strict, you know, you're not, you're every day you're eating, you're healing yourself. Like this is the state that we're in. And so I love that about gaps because almost every other, every other protocol and diet that I had been on prior to that was all just about removing things mm -hmm. with gaps. It's like, okay, it's just a matter of time before we're going to add this back in again. And, you know, like I had so many food sensitivities and allergies that, um, I was allergic to eggs. I was allergic to dairy. I eat both of those things all the time now, but I would mm -hmm. stick a toothpick in a, the tip of it into a quail yolk because quail is the best for sensitive people. I couldn't do duck or chicken. I would touch it to my toothpick. I would put it in my soup and I would react. Wow. And it okay. seems ridiculous because when you're, you, when you're doing it, like, there's no way, there's no way this is going to do anything. I'm so silly for even trying this. And then your body, and it's like a, like, thankfully, right. A mild reaction, but imagine if I had eaten a whole, you know, quail, quail stuff that, but like, imagine if I had eaten the whole thing or like a whole chicken, I would have had like explosive diarrhea. Yeah. So <laughs> it's nice. We all want to go big or go home, right? We're all taught that more is better. And that when you introduce something you do, you just like introduce the whole egg. And then some of us are left reeling afterwards. And so we kind of, it's kind of like the titration method where it's like, okay, this is just little by little by little and every single day you're healing. And so if it doesn't work today, depending on your reaction, it'll work in two weeks and four weeks and six weeks. And we're going to try again. So is there any, is there any sense in terms of like just powering through, right? You're in intro, screw it. I'm just going to go straight to intro kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And whether I react to meat stock or not, I'm just going to power through it like a, you know, whatever, like a Mack truck and just power through those histamine reactions, uh, still do the ferments or whatever. Um, is that sort of contraindicated in terms of healing or is that just like, okay, you're going to heal. Yes. You will heal. Even if you do have reactions, but you're going to suffer like crazy in the meantime. Um, generally it, it takes I'm a speaking lot. for myself here. <laughs> I, I have a little group, uh, on Facebook of people uh -huh. I talk to uh -huh. and I was like, Oh, if you have, you know, if you have questions, let's do it. And we're, we're trying to think of these questions and we're like, okay, this is what we need to know. <laughs> Um, don't, don't power through. And there's a couple of reasons for this. So 
when you're on intro and something isn't working, it's because your body wants to go slower. And it's because your body's like, hey, like I just, I literally like can't handle this right now. And so I'm trying to tell you. And this is like, I do a lot of education around detox support too, for this very reason, because again, it's like big, go big or go home, right? It's like, if you're feeling worse, that means more pathogens are dying, right? And then that means that you're going to get better faster. But this really isn't the case because um, like for meat stock, for example, meat stock kills candida, meat stock kills yeast. And so- I didn't know that. If um, we're drinking meat stock, so yeast literally like grows tentacles and- um, right. Dr. Becky Plotner has taught me, she has this like analogy that yeast starts out the size of a golf ball. Then if it's left unchecked by other beneficial bacteria, which most of us are in that state now, it grows the size of a tube sock. And then it starts sprouting. And then if it's more unchecked, right? It starts sprouting these tentacles and they found tentacles up to four feet long in people's bodies. Yeah. Yeast can grow in any organ. It can go through any kind of cellular wall. And so that is a huge reason for leaky gut. Um, meat stock is the glue that heals and seals the intestinal lining. So you drink some meat stock, it oh. decapitates these yeast tendrils. Mm. Yeast is dying releasing 176 different kinds of toxic gas that your body now has to detoxify and deal with. Yeah. Now, if you're on GAPS, you're already probably struggling with detoxification issues because if your gut isn't healed, your detoxification systems are overwhelmed. They're stopped up. They're not working. So then what ends up happening is that you're just in this flood of toxins in your bloodstream that your body can't release it doesn't mean that you're getting better faster it means that you're potentially causing more harm and so that's where it's important to be really careful and it is it's like you know going slower slowing down to like go faster in the long run it's like i was on so there's six stages of of intro when i like finally got a handle on actually how to do it the fifth time <laughs> I, um, I think that was the second or third time I'd tried since I was a practitioner. Um, but I, um, I was on intro for, I mean, I was on stage two, so six stages. I was on stage two for eight, like 10, eight to 10. I'll have to really do the math later, but it was thinking around like nine or 10 month mark. But stage two is just stage one with egg yolks. Is that right? Or, or what is it? Stage two? So there's, and this is kind of like new in the gaps world too, is there's extended stage two. Um, so in stage two, everything's cooked in the stock, right? On um, extended stage two, you can start um, cooking things in more advanced ways. So pan frying, um, roasting, and these are something that like you introduce like one at a time. Mm. Um, but so I was and dairy. So it was like basically like um. stay on, <laughs> stay on stage two until you can heal both of your allergies that have registered in a blood test <laughs> and then move on from there. Right. So eggs and um, like butter um 24 hour fermented sour cream um these were all things that i was working up to the entire time i was on stage two and then i remember um moving to stage three on my birthday and fermenting nuts properly prepared nuts and making those gaps pancakes the intro stage three pancakes and then it was probably like a couple months before I was just like completely on full gaps. It was like stage three, four, five, six, like it all kind of blended together because I had had that like such foundational level of healing, but nothing seemed like it was happening for so long. I mean, I had rashes on my face like six months in, which I had never, I had never experienced them hanging around so long before, because as I said, that was my fifth time trying this. 
Um, and, but, and so when you're like, should you just power through? I'm like, there's definitely like a mental thing to it that you like have to, because progress can seem so slow. So it's like yes. this balance between like some people get really quick results and some things clear up really quickly. The more complicated cases though, the deeper the damage, the longer it takes to heal. And, you know, unfortunately that's becoming more common and that's the people I work with. Those are the people who need yeah. a practitioner, you know? Right. And some, some people will get worse before they get better or it's not linear, Definitely. right? It's not like you just get better every day. I mean, you might go up and you might go down, you might go up, you might go down. And then eventually though, the, the road leads up, right? So yeah, um, and it's hard to see that sometimes. And I want to acknowledge that because right. at certain points, I really questioned my sanity and what I was oh, doing. Yeah, no, I, it ended I up agree, working I, out though. Yeah. yeah, I started journaling myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I, so I've only been on it two weeks and I, I don't want to complain, but I like some things have gotten worse and some mm -hmm. things have gotten better. Maybe I've gone too deep with it. I, I really... I've amped up my meat stock game like crazy. <laughs> I try to do a low histamine type stock, but I still react to it. But I am one of those guys, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe it's this macho thing, or I'm just like, I'm just going to power through. I don't care how sick I get, you know, which is definitely not the right way to do it. But, um, but some things have gone better. So uh, one thing that I have dealt with for many, many years on and off is something called, called chronic pelvic pain syndrome. And it's weird when I first, uh, so towards the end of my time with carnivore, uh, it actually came back. It came back for about two weeks, which is very short for me because I've had it for years at a time. And um, I said, okay, carnivore is not working for me anymore. I'm going to try the GAPS diet because I, I feel like carnivore is more kind of a bandaid for symptoms. It doesn't, I, for people who are really sick with leaky gut and they have, crazy issues or whatever, it doesn't seem to fully heal. It seems to just put symptoms at bay, but the gap side for me in, in, in terms of how I register it in my brain is this isn't actually a healing diet. So if you have autoimmune conditions, this is going to heal you. It's not just going to mask your symptoms. Right. Um, and I've talked to many people who, who have healed, right. Whereas in the carnivore world, I don't really know anyone who's healed from autoimmunity and like actually cured it or fully put it into, into remission, you know? Um, so that's the business that I'm interested in healing. I'm interested in curing. I'm interested in, you know, going back to how I was, you know, uh, where I could tolerate foods again um, and not blow up if I have a piece of broccoli or something. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, it was kind of interesting getting back to eating vegetables again, boiled vegetables, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, so in, in the last couple of weeks, so I noticed in the beginning, my, my chronic pelvic pain syndrome actually got worse when I first started, car, car, uh, gaps diet. But now after two weeks of being on it, it's like completely gone again, pretty much. And, uh, believe it or not, my rashes have actually gotten better, strangely enough. Great. But it's more the mental stuff has gotten a lot worse. The brain fog, uh, I'm getting intense anxiety. I'm waking up and I'm just like, my wife's like, what's wrong with you? I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just like so anxious and I feel wired and I'm not, there's no, no calm there. Right. Um, so uh, if somebody's getting really crazy um, die off or histamine reactions, I guess let's, let's talk about die off. I mean, what are some of the ways that they could detox that you have found work for people? Yeah. Um, and, and keep in mind, maybe some people might have some nutritional deficiencies. So, you know, some detox methods might be better for others. Like a lot of people I speak to, they're like underweight and malnourished. So something like maybe activated charcoal might not be such a good option for them. Right. So I like enemas. <laughs> I'm an old fashioned. I'm like, it's like the one thing that people like don't really want to hear. And it's the best way, unless you have like bleeding ulcers or, you know, something like 
really like chronic watery like unstoppable diarrhea you know there's not an across the board like best thing but you remove your body works so hard to like get all of these toxins into your colon right Mm -hmm. and then dr natasha talks about fecal overspill syndrome where in ill gut health you'll have feces that gets stuck and like kind of crusted on to the sides of the colon walls and so you may be emptying but you're not completely eliminating your bowel and then these toxins get reabsorbed back into the bloodstream these feces they provide a wonderful environment for parasites and all sorts of pathogenic bacteria that like to hang out there and so an enema is like signaling to your body like i'm clearing the way i'm doing my part to to help you remove this can you, can you meet me halfway? (laughs) Um, That's kind of like the energetic of of how I see, like, that's what it means to do an enema. Another thing is detox baths, right? Because we detox through our skin and um, using Epsom salt, bentonite clay, uh, dead sea salt, um, baking soda, apple cider vinegar, magnesium flakes. These are all good. And I do like, as far as supplements, I really like uh, vitamin C and magnesium. Uh, Magnesium isn't really in food anymore and it's part of every single detox reaction. So our magnesium stores get depleted really quickly. Um, This could also lead to anxiety, but I do warn all my clients of that because I'm like, die off 10, like, it can be a really, like, if you already struggle with depression or anxiety, die off can make your symptoms worse, right? Because the same kind of pathogens that are exhaling all of these toxins, particular to your situation, right? That make you experience the symptoms that you are when they die, they explode and release like all of them at once. And so a lot of this, these die off symptoms are going to seem very familiar but they may actually feel worse than what it feels like to actually experience this disease in the first place. So when you were talking about your chronic pelvic stuff, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And then, yeah, I was just kind of like warning one of my clients about this a couple of days ago. I was like, it can get like dark, like detox is dark um, yeah. or it can be. And so that is she always wants to know she's like just tell me if it's normal and i'm like it's normal <laughs> i want to know I mean, if it's, it's hard normal to or not completely. look when you change things around you change your diet around you lower your carbs you're going to have some level of detox like it's it seems to me like it's almost impossible to you know, avoid mm-hmm. right so i mean you have there has fair. to be some level of it right so there has you know like you say there are beneficial ways that you could help help manage that right? And going slower, doing these detox uh, type of regimens. Um, and uh, I had another question for you, but I'm, I'm, I have some brain fog today, as I mentioned. So I apologize. I totally forgot what the question was. Um, what was it? It was a very important question. Well, we could come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. okay. Yeah. So, Gentle. okay. So what Gentle. about, what about if, uh, say, somebody like myself, who's underweight. Okay. And this is another scenario I've run into with some other people as well. And is the gaps intro diet? I mean, look, you're just boiling vegetables, you're boiling meat. Okay. Are you getting enough nutrition? Are you getting enough sustenance to keep you going? Um, is that a worry that you see with a lot of people? Uh, it, it definitely is a worry. Uh, as far as like an actual legitimate concern, uh, I think it starts to be one, if you're in a place where you really can't um, take a time out, you really can't rest, um, you can't, you don't, you like can't listen to your body, don't start intro. Um, otherwise, so Mary Reddick started the intro diet. She was 86 pounds and she was five eight, right? And then she lost weight. Um, but the thing is, is 
that's just part of the journey. And it's really like hard, especially when you're already underweight, you're like, I can't lose any more weight. But the thing is, is that you're adjusting your microbiome. Your microbiome is why you can't keep on weight, not because of the amount of calories you consume, right? Because if that were the case, you would have already been like fixed per se. And so really what you're doing and kind of how to navigate that fear and that concern is to tell yourself I'm rebuilding my microbiome right now. Yes, I will lose weight initially, but this is setting the foundation for me to actually like hold on to the weight that I want to and to keep weight on. And I've seen a lot of people who want to gain weight on the GAPS diet gain weight. Um, And it, it tends to be the great equalizer, right? Because the same kind of protocol could also help someone who's struggled with being overweight as well. That's microbiome stuff too. Um, So it's about bringing the body back into balance and it is hard to trust that at first. Um, Yeah. yeah. I, uh, you know, I recently, I had like a brain MRI because I was actually worried about my brain. I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, especially when I, (laughs) when I'm not feeling so well, but um and it showed like some atrophy like my brain had shrunk because i was so underweight apparently this is what the doctor thinks initially you know i've lost so much weight on carnivore that my brain shrunk <laughs> so uh right so it's it's a concern of, of um a lot of people i've talked to with it being so underweight and everything um so lauren one thing i love about you i actually discovered you because i was looking for, i was like okay i need to get as much information as possible So I need to find a GAPS practitioner who knows what she's talking about. And I came across your website and you have all these really cool videos up on there, like tutorial videos, how to make meat stock, how to deal with die off or whatever, histamine, blah, blah, blah. So can you talk a little bit about that, about your website? Um, If people could, you know, do courses with you or do uh, one-on-ones with you or, you know, what what do you have going on and how, how is it that you're able to help people? that are kind of new to the gap side, like myself. Yeah. So I mentioned that I went on the intro diet five times and thought I spent a lot of time on gaps, um, before really dialing it in and, and, you know, kind of having a health crisis being the, you know, lightning bolt that inspired the kind of, um, I guess reverie I have for the human body now, because really what we're doing is we're building up your body from the ground up, from the soil up, from the microbes up, the, the microbes, your microbiome is the foundation for everything. So you nurture the soil, you nurture the human, you nurture the environment. Um, and I found myself saying certain things to clients all like time and time and time and time again, uh, until I ended up making these series of instructional videos because it's like, yeah, how to prepare meat stock, which is, you know, we've already talked about five times. Um, (laughs) What to expect during die off, right? What is normal? Um, Why and how you need to eat organ meats every single day. Um, So they're broken down. So they're individual courses, they're individual videos, they're broken down into Um, items that either can be purchased individually if you just are concerned about oh like body and cleaning products like I didn't even know that was a thing when you were healing your gut or whatever that is Um, there's I believe 14 different ones that are sold individually and these are like the foundations this is kind of like 101 this is like I really, really want everyone to know this. Um, Or you can purchase them as a bundle, which you end up, you know, saving a significant amount that way. And then um, you're grandfathered into any future courses that I make. Okay. And, uh, and do you also do like one-on-one training? Are you a coach as well? Or, or are you only? Yeah. 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 Um, Right now, I've been going through some stuff personally where I realized that I was healing myself from something much greater than I thought I was. And I have taken a step back. I'm a little more like reserved around um, just 
who I take on now, but I really, really enjoy taking people through intro. And so I've been doing a really kind of unconventional thing where I, if I think we might be a good fit, which I sent you to someone else for histamines, but um, I talk with you, we talk on the phone. It ends up kind of being like enough of a conversation where like we get to know each other and I see where you're at. And then I kind of like take some time and I meditate on it and see what kind of um, container would be best for you. I'm like, you know, it kind of has to do with the amount of hours, uh, consultation hours, you'll need the amount of time that I think it will take. Um, and then I really like being there for people in between appointments because I've been through this and it's yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to talk to someone. Yeah. Um, the great thing about like you, uh, I just have to say is that you've been doing this a long time. Yeah. You're coming from a standpoint where you've been sick and you understand what it's like to be sick and having to do the intro for so long and, and all the stages. And another thing that really attracted me to you, your, um, your sort of take on it is that you realize it's not just diet, right? There's so many little things that go into it in terms of your lifestyle and mindset and everything else. So I think it's uh, something, you know, you don't always see that sort of overall sort of like, you know, um, this overarching approach to healing, you know, um, a lot of people I've spoken to, they might have all this expertise on diet or they might have X, but I think through your own struggles, you've realized that it's a lot more nuanced than that. Right. So. Yeah. The but, picture keeps getting wider and wider too. I was like, yeah. Oh, I thought it was just this, but then there's this too. <laughs> and it just, so, so Lauren, I got to pick up the kitties from daycare, but, um, I would love to have you back on and I would love to maybe have, um, another discussion. I know you, you mentioned that you have this kind of illness that you figured out that you have. And, uh, maybe once you've revealed that on your channel, if you want to come back and speak to me about that and, and we could sort of like talk about, have you back on and talk about uh, my progress or if other people on with us as well, there's trying to struggle through this um, because I really appreciate your, your information. You have so much, such a vast knowledge of, of healing. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And yeah, it was a pleasure and yeah, I, I would love to come back. So we'll stay in touch. Sounds good. I want to link Lauren's uh, information down below in the description. So if you guys want to take a look at her awesome website, you could check that out uh, and get a hold of her. And uh, Lauren, we can also find you on Instagram as well. Yes, uh, Lauren Meadowsweet. Awesome. Okay, I'll also link that down below. Thanks so much, Lauren. And thanks so much for guys for tuning in and uh, great for some more updates soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.